Back by popular demand is Elliot. We did a video with Elliot and Dan Cox and people loved it. Elliot's invited us to come to his college, which is the Building Crafts College. What are you gonna do for us today? So today, obviously I haven't got my drawing up yet, but if you can see here, yeah. At our college and how I've learned roofing is we always make these small models. We do it the geometric way, so we do lots of kind of calculations and angles, no roofing apps or kind of books yeah. at the moment, just back to basics and that's how I did Dan's, Dan's roof you all saw. Yeah. Um, so today I'm just going to hopefully draw it out um, and just do kind of the basics of a hip rafter and a gable roof. I'm just going to explain this because a lot of people didn't understand that video. We got comments from people in America going, you British, you're back in the dark ages, we use this, we do it for the speed square. The point of the video was to show you the basics, get back to days before speed squares when carpenters had to know what they were doing and had to work everything out. And you know, you can go back hundreds and hundreds of years, carpenters were doing that. So it's a good skill. If you're gonna learn the skill properly, you need to start from the foundations and build up so that you have that knowledge, even if you go on to use modern devices in the future. So that's the point of that video. This is the point of this video, is to show you how you get that geometry. There's gonna be a time when you've got a roof structure where the speed square won't quite cover it and, or any other device. So it's great to learn that. To have yeah, that yeah, absolutely. And I think I found that as well. Yeah. Obviously Dan's square, I know how to use it in a speed square, but by having this, when I went with Dan, yeah. it just suddenly kind of clicks. Elliot is coming to the end of his apprenticeship. He's just got another yeah. week to go. So we just about sneaked in here before he's gone. And then he's going to be out, he's going to be working for himself. And yep. so if you're a builder and you need a carpenter and you're in that kind of Surrey, South London area, I think it's fair to say yeah. you don't want to yeah. travel too far. That's my area, then, definitely. Uh, you can contact him. We're going to put some details below and um, hopefully he will build a good career. Right, so this is this will be basically the building. This will be the wall plate. Yeah. Here are the walls. Exactly so, that. So this is what you come in and you start with. And the first thing I guess you want to do is just check the dimensions. Everything's parallel square. Yeah. Which are yeah. obviously in this I've, page, che I've checked the diagonals. In this one it is, but that would be where you would start. Just check everything yeah. square. Yeah, yeah. And I think when I when I was with Dan, I checked at the back here and then I stepped in and checked exactly where the end common rafter was. Got it. Because that's where all the geometry lies. Where my drawing goes from, that is where it was critical. Because I remember on Dan's one, there was like a 20 mil discrepancy. Not massive, but like enough, a little it? bit to throw my geometry off. Yeah, yeah. So I evened it out. out. Here it was 20 mil more, but I stuck to the one there because that's where the geometry was. I'll just make that clear by the way, that wasn't Dan. What, what happens there is that very often it's the bricklayer that bends the plate on and sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so good. So that's always the thing. Yeah, the yeah. brick is bending the plate on a couple of days before maybe, carpenter pitches up and he finds the plate isn't level or it isn't square. So this is your, this is your model, right? This is yes. your hips on everything, yeah? Yeah, yeah, just a typical kind of dual yeah. hip with yeah. jack rafters and a few commons. You, so what you want to achieve is this, basically. Yes, we, we want to achieve the hit end. We've got quite a few different types of rafters and quite a few types of different cuts. So you've got kind of your simple common rafter, yeah. but then we have a hit rafter and then with jacks. So now I'm going to take a few measurements from that rig yeah. and then I'm going to do this drawing now. And this drawing will give me all the angles. So I'll have a plumb cut up here. I'll get that angle. I'll be able to get this angle for the hip. Um, and then also the edge cuts for the jacks and the hips and also the lengths as well and kind of the height that this is going to end up as. On the site, you can do it to any, any sort of size. This is, we're going to be doing it at scale, obviously, but as you can see on my last video, I did it on a piece of chipboard about that big. The bigger you can go, the more accurate it will be. So when you get your bevel on it, you can get a better line on your bevel. Obviously, if you've got a really small angle and you're trying to line it up. So the bigger you can go, the better. So what I'm going to kind of start off with is, if you can imagine, it's kind of like a bird's eye view of the whole roof. When I do the gable here, what you could do is normally draw it that way so it makes sense to your eye, but with this hip drawing, I kind of do it this way. It will all tie in as one this time, but you can kind of do two separates. So the first thing I do is just nice and simple, is just draw a nice baseline all the way through, just nice and straight, and then that is a flat axis to go to. Working off my baseline, I'm just going to start kind of drawing the outer perimeter of the buildings. If you imagine these lines are the edge of my wall plate, so use my set square, get a nice 90 degree line, faintly 
I know it's going to end here roughly. These two lines that I'm going to draw are going to be the outer edge of the wall plates. I've measured the span, which is kind of wall plate to wall plate, is 998 mil for that rig. Everything I draw here is half the size on that rig. So when I come to doing it in real life, I just have to make sure I times all my measurements by two. Um, you can do it one to seven, whatever just makes it. If you're restricted to a board that size, you might have to do say a one to 12. Under here, I've got my scale conversion, which is basically the span and the rafter run all just divided by two. So this, these measurements here are what is going to apply to my drawing. So first of all, for the span, I'm going to come from this line to the other line, 499 mil. For now, it doesn't really matter how far you go out, um, but I'm just gonna do another line there. And that's the main thing now is when you're drawing these out, you just pay real attention to setting everything out square because the more accurate you make your drawing, the better chances and final finish you'll have of your rafters and your cut lengths, especially if you're doing a model for college or a competition like the skill bit, World Skills, um, you want everything millimetre perfect. Now I've done the span, I need something which is called the rafter run, which is the center of the ridge board. So simply half of my span, which is 499, is 249.5. So 249 and a half, and then 249. Just pencil this line in all the way through because this center line is going to help with your hip as well. So we've now got the span and just a nice center line that runs all the way through, which we can now start working off. So now we've got the outer edges of our wall plates done and now the rafter run, which is the distance the rafter is going to travel. We need to start working out what pitch our roof is and how much it rises. So then I can draw a line up here, which will give me my angles for my common rafter plumb cut and the seat cut. So now we're on to working out the rise of our roof. We've just got a little formula here. The rise will equal the pitch, which is 38, times by tan, then times by the rafter run. 38, which is our pitch, tan, which is what we type into our calculator, times by the rafter run. Because we're working on the scale, our rafter run, which is half the span, this measurement here is our rafter run, which is 249.5. Click tan on my calculator and it provides a bracket. In the brackets, I'm going to type 38, which is the pitch of my roof, close the bracket, and then I'm going to times by the rafter run which is 249.5 equals 194.9. So I'll go 195, round up by 0.1. That is the rise for this scale drawing. Up the center line from my baseline that I've drawn, 195 mil. With a little set square, I can just do a bit of a longer line for the center. Draw a line from the, my rise point straight back to one of the corners. That is kind of pretty much all you need for a gable roof. This is my gable end now, and but it also helps with the hip, hip rafters as well. So this part here for my gable or lean-to roof is just the simple 90 degree triangle, as you can see here. And when I first started, when I first walked in that workshop many years, two years ago, I thought, oh my gosh, that looks nothing like that hit there. And, it, and it, it doesn't. Once you've done the drawing, it makes you understand it. Because it's going at the angle, and like kind of traveling a further distance, that's why it's a bit different. I've got my gable drawn out. To find my angles, what I then do is just, I can get my protractor. This is if you want to now relate it to your chop saw. So if you have your chop saw that you cut your angles on, what I can do, just get my protractor on there, put the baseline zero there, read through here, and that is 52 degrees. It's just that one. And, but that's the plumb cut at the ridge. Fingers crossed, it's 38 degrees, and that is what I'm wanting. So obviously the pitch, of your, the pitch of your roof is from the base of your wall plate up, and then at the plumb cut is 90 degrees minus 38, hence, yeah. hence the so 52. Up to 90, it's then explain. Yeah, 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 the magic 90. All of the angles in a right angle triangle will add up to 180. So you've got your right angle there, and then these two will add up to 90. What I can then do, if this is just your simple lean-to roof, I can also get the length of my common rafter. You have a geometric length and then a cut length. So your geometric length is this length here, but obviously because it runs to the center, you're going to have a ridge board, which is 45 mil thick. It will shorten it by 20 mil. So what I'll do, I can get this measurement and then all I've got to do is just make a few deductions. So all I'll do is just minus half the ridge and half then the half the thickness of the ridge 
and then that will be my common rafter cut length that I mark out and, and saw away. So the triangle I've just drawn is what is demonstrated here. Once I put the ridge up here, it's gonna start creeping in a little bit. So the length I've got from my drawing is right from the center line to the far edge of my wall plate. So then all I'll need to do to get my final length is do 318, which is this length, and then minus, shall we say, 22 mil. And then that will give me the length from here, right there to the bottom there, okay? And then I've got my angles for there and for there as well. So now we've got the common rafter drawn out. And obviously, because now we're doing a um, we're doing a hipped roof, I'm going to start drawing out the hipped end. I will draw it out exactly on the bird's eye view. The hipped end here, and then I'll have two more lines coming out, which will be something called the true shape of the hip, which will give me my jack edge cut. And that jack edge cut is this one here because obviously it's a compound cut. Now I'll start with another, just a straight baseline. So it kind of ignoring this, this uh, common rafter sketch, I'll just come any distance up here, another line all the way through. The start and the baselines, again, exactly like I did before, but just for the hip rafter. When you're setting out your hip rafter, you have obviously your hip rafter, and then you have two here, some people call them king commons or end commons. You have your two M commons here. And when you set these out, you have your building span, your rafter run, which is halfway. What you then do is you step back your rafter run, but you put these M commons on the center line of that measurement. You don't put them to the left or to the right. You put them bang on center because that is where the geometry lies. So when I do this hip rafter drawing now, I'm going to step that drawing back to the rafter run, which is the center line. And then that means it will all tie in, all tie in perfectly. Because sometimes if you don't, you'll find on your hip rafter, the bottom of the plumb cut won't be touching the ridge board. So you might, you know, on this scale, I'd have about a 10 mil gap. But obviously when you're doing an eight inch rafter, the angles just won't work out. It might be like five or six degrees different. So that's why when you put these end commons, you always put them, the rafter run back, but bang on the center line. It's a bit deceptive. You don't put them to the left or the right. A lot of people, I guess you'd mark rafter run, put the end common to the left of it. That's you've right. got to you've got to put it spot on. By doing that, the crown rafter is the same length as your common rafter. Cool. It's just another common on the side there. When I do these, sometimes the timber's a bit awkward because I know that's the cut length and I know that is geometrically right. I can just push that in and that will square the whole of the roof up. So if we kind of pretend our end of our building will be somewhere here. So the hip rafter is going to run and then land on one of these corners. As I just explained, we have to step it back, the rafter run. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my baseline. I'm now going to come forward my rafter run. I'm going to come forward 249 mil. Do a mark. And once I've got those two lines, I'm just going to do another parallel line all the way through try and keep your pencil lines faint so as you go you can rub them away because there are quite a few lines and when you're starting off you don't want too many with the rafter run now drawn out all i simply do because because the roof is an equal pitch so it's a, i want it to be 38 on this side and 38 on this side not a bastard hip my hip rafter is going to run at 45 degrees to simply draw a line you can i think just do one but i'll just do both just for the sake of it these angles are nothing to do with the hip at the moment. So now, now I'm going to go and kind of draw the true shape of the hip. I'm going to project a line here, back there and two up here. And then that will give me my true shape. If you can imagine, we've drawn this perfectly at 2D on the flat. Because the hip rafter runs at an angle, it's starting to change. So these angles aren't going to be true. So that's our bird's eye view of the hip. Yes, that is exactly how we've done the drawing. But now if you bring the camera down here, possibly, you can see that obviously it runs at the angle. Yeah. So when I do that drawing, the angles change. I guess if you were doing, you know, if you were doing a piece of skirting, these yeah. angles would work out perfectly. But as you can imagine, if then you start moving the skirting up, you're going to be going into compound cuts, which is what these are. And because they're compounds, 
They're forever changing. Sorry. I've been out in my garden with a head torch on at half past eight at night <laughs> doing a common rafter model roof. So I've spent, you know, it has been not hard to, it was hard to understand it. I had no clue at all, but I just put the time in, put plenty, plenty of time in. I've, I've cut loads of hip rafters in and they've stuck up this high. And I thought, oh God, what have I done, you know, for my mo model? But that's the beauty of it, of the model. I can overcome all of those things, step back, think, right, El, what have I done? Go back to my drawing. Because I think on the basics of roofing, it's not quite simple, but you've just got the pitch, the rise, simple cuts, but there's so many other little bits that catch you out, like the height above plates. So by doing these models, it just helps you tick, tick that all off. These purling cuts, they are another one that defeat people. I haven't done purling cuts yet, but on the drawing, you can get the dihedral angle, which is this angle here, and you can also get purling cuts and you can get a quite a lot more. I've got a book by Les Goring that I'll show you oh, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, you can, you can get ev pretty much every angle to do you ever see in a roof oh, can be done geometrically. From any one of the hip rafter lengths, I do this one because it makes sense to come back this way. It's just how I kind of do it. What you want to do is I'm going to project a line beyond this point here, beyond this length, the rise of the roof. So I've just got a straight edge, marked a little faint line, and I'm now going to be wanting to come up this way 195 mil, which is this measurement here. So I'll come up here, 195 mil, pencil that back. From this length here, I'm going to draw it back to the corner of the hipped end from that point, which is projected the rise of the roof. That now is the geometric hip, hip length. So just like the common rafter before, I could work out the length of my hip without getting up there with a tape measure. And all I'd have to do is just do a few reductions of the ridge board. But obviously on site, everything's a bit different. You would do it with a tape. You do an on-site measurement to get up there, but just to check it. Um, but this still helps because it can get me in the ballpark. If I measure the ridge, um, the hip, and it's three meters, my drawing might be about 304 mil, depending how, but I know I'm on the money. Going through at 45 degrees, yeah. back to the kind of the baseline, yeah. I then project that, the length, the rise of the roof, which is from there to there. This measurement here, which is 195 mil, yeah. I then go from there, ah, that way around. out there, but it's in line with the, so you score a long line through, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then right. go up that line, 195. 195. Projected the rise, yeah. and then we draw it straight back to the corner of the hip. And that gives us the geometric hip hip length. The reason obviously I've drawn this is because yeah. that provides the basics for this. Yes. I need to find the rise. Yeah. I want my hip rafter to be at the same pitch. Yeah. If you do that baseline, if you just shunt it over, yes. so you have a nice break in between so you don't get confused that's, at the start. That's where I was getting confused. It's a bit like the old simultaneous equations. <laughs> if you ask me exactly how we did it at school, probably don't really know, but it's kind of the process and the formula that you just follow. This angle down here now is going to be the hip rafter, the hip seat cut. Now with the geometric hip length, I'm going to form the true shape of the hip. What you'll do is you'll take this measurement of the hip length, either with a trammel or a tape measure, and you'll strike an arc of that length, bring it round here, and you'll strike an arc from each corner. And then once I've got that arc, I can join it back up. So I know my, my geometric hip length is 404 mil. So to keep it simple with a tape measure, all I'm going to do now is go from the corner of my hip to this centre line that I originally drew all the way through and just move my tape until it intersects the centre line at 404. It's 404 there. So with the trammel, all I do is just set it to the geometric hip length. And then if you can imagine, I go from this corner yeah. and I strike an arc. And then I go from this corner up here and strike another arc. And where they intersect, I'm then going to just draw back. Go back to that. And then go back to that. Now that I've drawn the true shape of the hip, this angle here is going to be my jack edge cut. All I need now to complete my hip is I've got my hip C cut and I can do with my hip plumb cut, which is the cut up at the ridge. So then back to this angle, this line here, what I'm going to do is come from this corner up this line, the geometric hip length. 
So I will come up 404 mil. I'll put a mark. And then from that mark, I'll draw it back to the true shape point up here. I'll rub some of the lines out probably after. And now <laughs> this angle here is the hip plum cut. If you can see here on the common rafter roof, we've got 38 degrees for the plum cut. But now if we go onto the hip and we use a protractor, we can see the plum cut is actually 41 degrees. So there's, there is a bit of a difference. Yeah, so that but should it, still add up to 90. We'll see. So if we've got 41, well, we'll go down here, we'll check it. Wait, that's, that's 29 degrees. And this, oh, it's this one here. Well, even now, I, I just checked that and I knew that those two didn't add up to 90. Yeah, so I was thinking, oh, well, what's going on? This is the hip plum. Hip plum, that's the edge cut. That's the, a lot of fellas just, Put it, put it at 45, yeah, yeah. but you can see there it is actually a bit different. So when you're on a big roof, not too bad, but if you do it kind of here, if you're doing to joinery standards sort of thing, you will notice to get it absolutely spot on for it, but yeah, just sometimes 45. So there you can see is the hip plum cut and that, that is the difference between the hip plum cut and the common rafter plum cut. You can see it's nearly 10 degrees difference mm. because it runs at a greater distance through so you wouldn't you can't just go to your hip rafter and put 52 degrees on it because it's not going to work they are two different two different things so that obviously your jack rafter diminish is if you had five jack rafters running up this length the diminish is the length that it reduces every time so if you had 10 jack rafters quite a lot you wouldn't have to measure every single one all you then do is just work out your diminish and keep dropping it back. I work out my diminish here. Whatever your rafter spacing is, for those rafter spacings, they're 150 mil spacing, obviously for model. So to scale, which is half, I will come up here 75 mil. Okay. So if you're doing a standard roof, you'd be wanting 400 centers, so you'd come in 200. Draw a line that goes all the way through and intersects this length here. Yep. And then this length, this length that goes from here to here, which is 95 mil, is your diminish. Uh, and that is your diminish from your common raft, from your end com. If you can think, yeah. that is the last normal proper rafter. Then it starts going into jacks. So to find your first jack rafter would be your common rafter cut length minus 95 mil or your diminish. Or well, that's where it all kind of goes from. It just yeah. all stems back. So, because you're going from there, then you just measure minus your 95 from the length of your end common. This is the drawing all fully completed now. And once I've completed my drawings, I always go back, just get my protractor and I can just go around and just gather all the angles of my cuts. So for this jack edge cut, I've got 38 degrees there, my hip edge cut 41, 61. So I've just gone around with my protractor and I can just check them all like I did on Dan's job. I can then just get my bevels. And as you can see now, by, by drawing, doing the drawing as big as you can, you can get the full length of the bevel on the drawing. If my drawing was only that big, you, don't, you lose the accuracy. If you're marking it out by hand, you know, obviously you can just put JE, the jack edge cut, and so forth. And just go around and gather all your bevels. And then this way, you're covered for both ways. If you'd like to do it with a chop saw, You've got all the angles here, or if you want to do it by hand or with a skill saw um, and kind of sight it through, you, you can do either. On this book, it doesn't give me the angle, but it gives me kind of my bevel cuts. I've just gone on here and I've put the hip edge cut. And then now by going off my drawing, my hip edge cut is here. This is the angle I've taken from the book. And as you can see, it's absolutely perfect. And it will be for the rest of the cuts. Now that I've got the angles, yeah. you can use probably Dan's app to get the, to get the lengths as well sort of thing, couldn't you? But you've so been making like, an eyebrow, I see, out there. Yeah, yeah, I've been making a curve, curved eyebrow window um, yeah. with lots of diminishing rafters and stuff. Yeah. And I've also been making, a, I've just finished a staircase. So this is what I've been working on recently at college. I've, um, for our endpoint assessment, we have to fit 
can't really see them, but we have to fit a set of stairs with a winder. And I've always, it's kind of always baffled me how the kind of the top newel post notches round and bits and bobs. So I thought to completely understand it, because I have, I've never really fitted any staircases, I'd make, I'd make my own. So for the past couple of blocks, I've been basically kind of teaching myself um, with a few hints from Andy um, on how to, make, how to make this. So it's all, it's a house stringer, as you know, like your kind of domestic staircase. That is all routed in with a special template. I had to, had to rescue it there with a bit of filler. But as you can see, I put that over and routed it because there's no way you'd freehand that. Um, so I've routed out all the stringers and then it's obviously it's a bit narrow, but I've done it all to regulations. So the going and the rise, two going, no, two rise plus the going is got to be between, I think, 550 and 700. I, I'm not 100%, I can't remember, but I've, I made this staircase spot on to regulations. Obviously, it's a bit narrower and hand, and this was actually designed to fit under my cut roof I made. So the roof I did with my eyebrow, this is perfectly, perfectly fits underneath it if I wanted to. But now we've decided to display it as a separate piece. Um, and then obviously it's all mortise and tenons, nice mortise and tenons down there. And oh, for, the, for the camera, you know, I can properly walk on it. Yeah, all wedged underneath with the risers. There's some lovely mortises I did for the stringers as well. All of these treads and the stringers, I laminated them together and ripped them down with the skill saw made these all kind of by hand, glued them, planed them. So a lot of it is all, I just made it on a set of two sets of stools. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I've been working on. And so is that going to the show then? Yes, it will be at the end of year show at the Carpenters Hall, I believe. And along with my roofing jig as well. I think we're going to come along to that. Yeah, be nice. There's some lovely work. And as you can see, the tuck pointing from the other people.